next up we have Daniel. Daniel. <laughs> Daniel. Doing great, guys. Next up we have Daniel Emertanian talking about the power of comedy. Hello everyone. Hello. Um, this is not my capstone. My uh, original capstone was going to what well, was on insurgent groups, but I kind of wanted to talk about something a little bit more lighthearted than the mass genocidal killing of people. So here we are. <clears throat> um, emotions. <laughs> right? God. I mean, like, what are they really? Chemicals? Sure. Your heart being an asshole? Maybe. A little man inside your head named Frank who's telling you to murder all of your friends? Well, maybe that's just me, but... Emotions are weird, right? Happiness. Sadness. Anger. Fear. Let's... Let's talk about fear for a second then, huh? It is a very special type of emotion. You know that saying, um, the easiest way to motivate human beings is through fear? It comes up in a lot of pop culture references, movies, media, anything. Especially currently. Um, but let's test that out, shall we? Uh, if you're a senior, can you raise your hand? Connor, I choose you. Um, how long did you procrastinate on your capstone? Uh, collectively or what? Like, give me like a like how many months before you really started writing? Ooh, I think about a month, and then I'm gonna admit that a month of my game need to change. Okay, why did you start after procrastinating for so long? Uh, Marie Rose started breathing down my neck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, were you afraid to fail if you didn't turn in your capstone? No. Just say yes. <laughs> um, it's kind of like, well, well <laughs> this was supposed to go, he's going to be like, yeah, you're right, Dan. And I was going to be like, thank you, everyone, Dan and McCanyon. Um, but that's all right, we'll move on with it. Um, it's the fear of failure. Think about it for a second here. As students, why do we really do anything? I know like there's that abstract concept of learning and getting an education, yeah, blah, 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 whatever. But if we don't do our homework, if we don't turn in papers, what happens? We hit consequences. We are afraid of what those consequences might bring later on in the future. But that's a stretch, I understand. We live in a small little campus in a small part of the world and blah blah blah, it's not a big sample population, blah blah blah, science, whatever. Um, but let's expand that then for a second. How many of you guys ever watched TV, let's say one time? Raise your hand. If you've watched TV at least once in your life, raise your hand. Wow, everyone, that is surprising. Um, okay, well how many of you have watched uh, news with your parents. You know what I'm talking about? Where like they're like, 75 million people have died today. And then your mom looks at you and goes, oh boy, you're not allowed to go outside anymore. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. And I remember one event particularly um, where I was sitting with my parents watching TV and um, we were watching about kidnappings that were happening in my neighborhood. And they were saying, kidnappings are on the rise. Children are disappearing everywhere! And the actual fact was a solid, like, two more students came up. Uh, two more children were being kidnapped. But my mom looked at me and she would fear in her eyes. The technical term for the, something like that is called fear-mongering. The action of deliberately arousing public fear or alarm about a particular issue. So, I have a quick example. I have two examples for you, if you bear with me while I work with science and computers. Um, the first one is a political ad that came out in 1964. Shall we? <laughs> 
Slipping away. America's best days are behind her. America, you have a choice to make. It is time that we take our country back. You need to get angry. Our worst fears might very well be here. time, someone figured out that human beings respond really well to fear. Um, and they've been taking advantage of it. Sorry, I'm losing my place in my notes. They've been taking advantage of it, uh, like those political ads or like things from The Daily Show. Um, and what you'll see now when you read articles or listen to radio or watch TV is you get titles like Ebola virus lives on hospital surface for days. <laughs> or, the next Bin Laden, meet ISIS. <laughs> or, the death of America. I literally googled news, and these were the, maybe the first, like, top ten that I picked from, that came up on titles of news articles. I mean, we can't help it. We see things like this, and we click the link, we watch the show, we listen to the radio, um, and see, the problem is that when we look at problems in the world domestically with this mind state of fear, we begin to see a solvable problem as unsolvable, as an issue that is so vast that what in the world could we possibly do but qu uh, quiver in our, in our boots, you know? Ooh, I gotta speed up. So what do we do, right? Um, this talk was titled The Power of Comedy. Um, and now you're probably wondering, like, comedy, what would you mean? You would have been laughing, Daniel. <laughs> you little weirdo. Um, but I think we should go back to those emotions again. And um, where does this all play in? Where does comedy play in? Well, I think that we as a nation, because um, I can at least speak for this country, um, we have, um, I'm the president of the senior class, I, I know. Um, as children, the first thing we do besides screaming is laugh, right? Comedies will 
tell jokes amongst our friends. We'll find people who are funny and we'll hang out with them. <laughs> Please hang out with me. Uh, <laughs> but I see fear as the opposite of that joy. Fear convolutes and confuses where happiness, joy, like that feeling of laughter, it clears you, it de-stresses you, it makes you happier, right? Um, yet, comedy has no place in formal settings. Have you noticed that? Uh, at a young age, teachers will tell you to stop joking because you gotta take something seriously. Or, um, <clears throat> at a meeting, you know, stop making, you know, fart jokes or something. We got, we got a serious problem on our hands. Um, or, as a leader, if a, if a leader makes a joke during a speech or anything like that, people criticize that individual. They see that person as weak, incapable of leading. Why is that? I mean, for me, all of my best lessons that I've ever learned in school have been, been delivered to me by humor. Right? Oh, don't lift the binder up. Oh, no. Okay. We're gonna move on. All right. <laughs> um, imagine, though, if the news was funny. And by this picture, I'm probably assuming you guys are thinking about The Daily Show with Jon Stewart, right? This is one instance of news that has been turned funny. Uh, and it's become immensely popular, and it has sparked so many more ideas, so many new comedians who have come up and become politically aware, right? Um, and what they do, and like, granted, I know they cater to a very liberal audience, but what they do is they pass upon domestic and international news in a lighthearted way. You're not afraid of what they talk about, you laugh. But at the same time, you're somehow still taking that situation incredibly seriously. That is the power of comedy. And um, that is what the news is for. It's to pass on information so you can make your own opinions about something, rather than scare the living shit out of you. I don't know if I can say that word, but I did, so I'm too bad. Um, in classrooms, a joke can brighten a class. Uh, in meetings, it can ease tension and refresh minds. And as a leader, it can drive points, and it can make individuals who are trying to see what you're trying to say much more, like, just on the same wavelength. Comedy is incredibly powerful, and I think that while this is just like a little brainchild of mine, I think it has enormous amounts of potential. Um, and I can certainly tell you it's a sure, it's a hell of a lot better than scaring at everyone around you. Thank you guys.